A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and doom. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin on you today, loving him and walking in his ways, and keeping his commandments, statutes, and decrees, you will live and grow numerous. And the Lord, your God, will bless you in the land you are entering to occupy. If, however, you turn away your hearts and will not listen, but are led astray and adore and serve other gods, I tell you now that you will certainly perish. You will not have a long life on the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and occupy. I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life then, and you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him. For that will mean life for you a long life for you to live in the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. Gloria Tibi Domine. Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose his life or forfeit himself? Verbum Domini. The Gospel gives us a tough question to ponder at the beginning of Lent from the Lord 
Jesus' lips himself. He says, what profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose it or forget himself? Tough questions always have tough answers. It is totally possible for any one of us to build a life of success, a life centered around ourselves. It is very possible to go through life setting your heart on material possessions and riches and lose the ultimate meaning of life. How easy it would it be even to build a life of comfort even and never even going deep down below the surface level. And when I say that, I mean really pondering the deep questions of life. Why am I here? What is the purpose of existence? What is the meaning of life? What is the purpose and meaning and value of suffering? These are the ultimate questions of life that every one of us should ponder all throughout our lives, even from the time we are children. And the way we look at those questions are going to change throughout our lives. I'm sure the way that Colette and Therese look at those questions now are different than the way they're going to look at them when they're 20 or 30, right? But they change. They mature, hopefully, by God's grace. And every decision we make in our lives has consequences. The decisions we make especially during younger years, shape our character, who, will, who we become in later years. They forge our character. The good news is that it's never too late to change. It's never too late. As long as we have breath within us, we can repent and change and convert, turn toward the Lord, more and more. And this is the urgency of Moses in the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy. He says, Today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and doom. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin on you today, loving him and walking in his ways and keeping his commandments, statutes and decrees, you will live and grow numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to occupy. When we are sick and go to the doctor, perhaps we would do just about anything to feel better. If you've ever been really sick and have the flu or have even strep throat, Sometimes every part of your body is aching. And how, if you have a throat problem, how your toes can ache are beyond me. <laughs> but it happens. And you would do just about anything to feel better. And sometimes you're laying on that doctor's office table and just saying, just give me anything to make me feel better, to get the sickness out. Sickness is a burden, and no one asks for it. We hope that a doctor can prescribe just the right cure. Sin and the consequences due to sin are a sickness of the soul. Sin is never God's fault. Sin is our fault. Sin is our choice. We can turn towards the Lord, and this is a daily process of conversion and self-denial, or we can turn away from him and reject him. This is also an ongoing choice. 
scary to think of it that way. That turning away from the Lord is also a choice that can be ongoing. Somebody can turn away and turn his back toward God and toward destruction. It's very possible to turn away and to reject God. And this is a prescription that leads to hell, to leads to eternal damnation. Turning away from God, not heeding his voice, not heeding his commandments and his precepts. The prescription that leads to eternal death. God does not will this. God does not will the death of a sinner, and we're all sinners. And that's what Lent is about. It's about recognizing that we are sinners and that we need God. Moses gives us the cure to this spiritual disaster. Look at this as a prescription, the readings, the book of Deuteronomy. If you, however, turn away your hearts and will not listen, but are led astray and adore and serve other gods, I tell you now that you will surely perish you will not have a long life on the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and occupy. I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I'll pause for a minute. The doctor, when we go to the doctors, sometimes the doctors will tell us, this is what you need to do to get better. You need to take care of yourself. You need to do this. You need to do that. And we can choose. We can choose not to follow doctor's orders, or we can choose to follow the doctor's orders. They're not always right. They're not infallible. Moses says, I have set before you life and death and the blessing and the curse. Choose life, he says, then that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him. For that will mean life for you, a long life for you to live on the land that the Lord swore he would give your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses says, choose life. Choose eternal life, ultimately. He gives us the recipe for eternal life. And Psalm 1, which is the very first of David's hymns to God, is really the prescription for life. And we can almost say, a foreshadowing of the Sermon of the Mount when he says, Blessed are those who hope in the Lord. Blessed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Sounds like advice that our parents might give us. Nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates, ponders on his law day and night. He is like a tree that is planted near running water that yields fruit in due season and who leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. And then the wicked, he addresses the wicked. Not so are the wicked, not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Wind comes along and drives away the chaff. 
for the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. The eternal word, our blessed Lord, also gives us a prescription in the gospel. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. The synoptic gospel, Luke, adds the word daily. This prescription, if you will, is in Matthew and Mark and Luke, but Luke as a good doctor, a physician, adds the word daily. Daily take your medicine. Daily take up your cross and follow the Lord. And Jesus does not simply ask us to follow him, but before commanding this, he says that we need to deny ourselves and take up our cross again daily. Denying ourselves requires putting our lives in the perspective of divine eternity and not living just for now, but living in the context of eternity, seeing, basically seeing the forest, seeing the whole picture, the way God sees the whole picture, not just seeing in front of us, not being very limited. It's kind of like looking through a little keyhole, a skeleton keyhole. We used to have one of those doors in our house. I don't think they make them anymore. It had a skeleton key. Just, you know, you can see very limited. You look through that hole, you can see something on the other side, but it's not much. Nowadays, we have these big viewfinders. We can see pretty much everything. But we need to live within the divine perspective. In the context of eternity, our life is so short. And yesterday, our, some of our EWTN media outlets, including the Register and CNA, put out this very beautiful and pithy meme by Mother Angelica. It was about 40 seconds long, and it was on Ash Wednesday. And Mother Angelica said, and I'm quoting her, she says, life time is so very short. The days are passing quickly. And then she says in the context of Ash Wednesday, one day there will not be ashes on your heads There will be ashes in the box, and you'll be those ashes. So have a happy Ash Wednesday. (laughs) That's Mother Angelica for you. She had the tenacity, she had the, the boldness of being able to suck you right in the gut with an eternal truth. The reality that we need to hear. And she had the, she could be funny about it, we laugh, but it's true. It's true. We're going to be ashes one day, we're going to be dust. We owe God everything. He created us, he redeemed us, and he sustains us. And following Christ is not the easy life. It's the hard life. Each of us has our own crosses. A cross without Christ is a curse. A cross with Christ is a blessing. Christ has already paid the price for your soul. The price he paid by his own passion and death far exceeds any amount of worldly accumulation of wealth and prosperity. Christ paid the the price, the ultimate price for our souls. That's the message that Lent presents to us throughout this season as we go on toward Holy Week and Easter. 
to meditate upon the reality that without God, we are nothing. And with God, he gives us everything. He wants us to give all, to give our all, so that, again, that we may receive all. His eternal reward, his eternal beatitude in heaven. 